Um, so now we have Karen Dosko from Klein Group. Um, so while we're setting up, I'll just introduce Karen to you. So stepping into the world of beauty devices, whose market has reached close to one billion at the retail level in 2011, it's quite interesting to hear from Karen. She's an industry veteran and known expert in the field. She's been with Klein Group for 15 years and is responsible for a series of continuing specialized reports in areas of beauty retailing, professional skin care, natural personal care, and home fragrance. She's worked with Pantene, Chanel, Avon, and has had multiple conference presentations and industry ex expertise publications in GCI, Cosmetics Design, Happy, Women's Wear Daily, and I could go forever because the list is really long. So it's my pleasure to invite Karen Dosko. <laughs> The um, topic that I'm going to speak about is aesthetic beauty, um, and it really is a, a dynamic one, and um, a lot of people are very interested in this market. But just for you, um, for those of you who don't know about Klein, actually a lot of um, the attendees are our clients, we're a um, management consulting group. We're based in New Jersey. Um, we cover several different markets. I'm from the consumer products area, which is basically focused on personal care products. We do consulting work, proprietary work, as well as syndicated reports. We have offices not only in New Jersey, but we have offices around the world. And that really allows us to do a lot of custom work that's appropriate for the market that we're um, reporting about. We have offices in Prague, Italy, China, as well as Latin America. We know a lot about skincare. It's a subject that I'm very involved in day in and day out. We have a variety of syndicated reports that focus on the skincare market. The two that you see here are our annual cosmetic and toiletry report as well as the one that deals with the market for professional skincare, which is basically those products that are sold by doctors or that you can get through a spa, salon, or in Europe, Beauty Institute. And basically, we found this year that with the, the rising um, in consumer confidence and promotional activity and technological advances, the market for cosmetics and toiletries really started to rebound in 2011. And this figure really shows you about the facial treatment market, the topical products that are for the, um, the face. And what you see is that while the total market grew by about 4% in 2011, you can see that professional brands grew a little under that, but really that luxury brands experience the large, largest gains. And those are the products that you can buy in department stores and specialty cosmetic specialty stores like Sephora. And, um, and so that, I just, yes? What's a specialty brand? A specialty brand would be that uh, brand, Bath and Body Works would have skincare, or the body shop would have, um, it would be the specialty store's own branded line. Their share, is de their share has declined for this year. Mm -hmm. And some of the up and coming trends, trends that we spotted for this year in the skincare market is that technology is really important and helps to drive the market. Consumers are really interested in technological advances and new ingredients. And that, I mean, anti-aging has, that's, that's a huge trend that's been going on for, for over 10 years. But we see that it started to, br it's starting to branch out into other areas, not just wrinkles, but hyperpigmentation and um, skin firming and skin lightening um, products that are of interest. And really, this, this third bullet's important because it kind of leads into the topic that I'm going to speak about. Customers, customers, consumers are very, very savvy and they're um, intrigued and enticed to get prof professional results at home. The at-home market is huge. And this c next bullet kind of leads into the luxury sales growing um, at a rate over the average, which is 
people are trading up in terms of facial treatments. Let me, let me clarify a little bit. The consumer today is very savvy. She might buy her cleanser at CVS and spend $12. On the other hand, she might have this really fabulous specialty treatment product that's $100, and she'll go to a doc, her doctor to buy that. So she'll, you know, her bucket, she might cherry pick the products, but she will spend and trade up for those kind of products that are important to her. And a lot of, in a lot of cases, those are the specialty treatment products. And then natural products, that's a trend that we've seen over the years, and those products still continue to pr proliferate. And men's grooming seems to be an area that a lot of marketers are focusing on this year more than ever. And so with that kind of backdrop in mind, we saw that last year there was this incredible new market that really was showing up everywhere. And it was the market for at-home beauty devices. And we, um, we set out to research the market and there was a lot, of, a lot of companies in the United States as well as Europe that were very interested in this report because it's the first time that anyone's really researched the, um, this market because it is so new. And what we found is that, and we know this through our professional skin care report, is that, I mean, the face is just a roadmap of skin care concerns. I mean, there are so many skin care concerns that women have today that the opportunity to address these skin care concerns is really, it's, it's endless, it's abundant. And we also know that men and women are very eager to try new non-invasive ways to maintain or re gain their youthful appearance. And it's important to show, I mean, there's data that you can see from the Association of Plastic Surgeons that talks about statistics involving men having um, non-surgical cosmetic procedures, and the numbers are really incredible. I mean, men are definitely into this market, and they want to, you know, they want to have an eye lift or have the their crow's feet, uh, you know, removed. Also, it's it's important to everyone. And you know, there's still a lot of consumers that are willing to skip the spas and doctors' offices. You know, consumers that would rather not go to a doctor for a Botox injection and would rather try something um, on their own at home. And some of them are willing to even skip the gym and tone at home. And this is like, this whole body um, aesthetics area is really popped up as, as being very strong in terms of new products in 2012. This chart shows you one of the things that we do every year in our professional skincare report um, when we speak to marketers um, of these products as well as doctors and spas, we ask them about what type of skincare concerns are most important to them from a sales standpoint. And aging obviously ranks up there um, as number one, but this year um, hydration and moisturization came up as important as well, um, you can see acne is a perennial um, skin care concern for, for even adults, and hyperpigmentation, which is really, you know, often kind of a branching out of anti-aging. So there's a lot of opportunities to address um, a variety of skin care concerns. So all these factors gave way to a new market worth a billion dollars in retail sales. And when we announced the findings from our research last year, I mean, we got a lot of inquiries about the subject matter. There's really not too many new billion dollar markets that we come across in the cosmetic and toiletry arena. It's very, it's very novel and um, really a lot of people stood up and took notice of that. And um, you know you can that's evident in L'Oreal's purchase of Clarisonic mid-year, and there's other um, movements afloat um, of large multinational marketers acquiring these type of companies. So I just kind of want to share with you some of the findings and information about the devices market. Um, 
basically, these are the four main um, areas of focus for devices. And in terms of sales, cleansing devices rank number one with laser hair removal following as the second largest um, device segment, followed by anti-aging and acne. In terms of who are the players in the market, Clarisonic, which is really kind of um, the granddaddy um, of the marketplace, is the leader in the beauty devices market. It was in 2011. And Clarisonic, as most of you know, is a cleansing system. They also have an anti-aging product called the Opal, but for the most part, most of their revenues are for their cleansing brushes. Clarisonic is followed by Nono and Tria, and both of those brands are laser hair removal brands. And then you can see Olay Pro-X, which is cleansing. The Galvanic Spa is New Skin's product. Um, so what's important to see here is that um, laser hair removal is very important in terms of opportunity, but you know, there's also products that um, focus on acne and um, body toning. And this basically shows you looking across the various segment who the market leaders are by segment. And Clarisonic leads cleansing. Anti-aging is LightStim. LightStim is a company that does a lot of their marketing on um, QVC. And we can talk a little bit about this, but one of the like really interesting things about this market is that it's, it's fun and it's entertaining to get educated on these products. I mean, on any given night, you can turn on QVC and you can see somebody demonstrating these products. Or even, I mean, the other night, I saw on Access TV on Channel 4 in New York, Mario Lopez was giving away these facial rollers. Um, there's Groupons on these products. So it's really getting a lot, of, a lot of buzz. And just talking about the, um, you know, I think that the distribution part of it's really important for you to know. We, um, our research covered three basic trade classes, direct, luxury, and mass. And what we found is that direct, which for, for all intents and purposes, the most, the most important part of the direct equation as it pertains to devices is the internet. I mean, New Skin is a person-to-person -person company and they do have a very nice business, but internet is very important as is, um, as is home shopping in terms of distribution for these brands. Many of the brands started out in this channel. And, that, and that's the way a lot of um, professional brands, professional skincare brands, their distribution has gone also through the direct sales channel. We do a lot of reporting on channels of distribution and have um, many reports on that. And we really have found that sales through the direct channel um, especially in these economic times, people staying at home more, more interested, you know, in snuggling up with their iPad, um, that sales through the direct channel have really um, been blockbuster. So what you see is that the majority of sales are direct, but in terms of growth, it's in the mass market where the growth really, um, really propelled in 2011. Clarisonic is a cleansing product, and that's in the luxury segment of distribution. And then you have Olay, which came out, um, not last year, the end of the year before, and that's in the mass segment. So it's kind of a, a trickling down of sorts that has occurred in terms of distribution of these products. So we are in the throes of our research on this topic in um, right around now. And I have some very preliminary things to share with you in terms of what we have found for the devices market. This year we decided that um, not only were we going to explore facial treatments, that the body really had um, a place in this market too. So one of, the thi one of the areas that we really have seen a lot of growth in is marketers, existing marketers, really focusing on men. And you can see um, on the left-hand 
corner, there's the Clarisonic Cleansing in gray, and New Face, which is a toning product, is marketing something that, you know, they hope to be more appealing to men. One of the other things we saw is that there really is a greater focus in terms of the number of offerings on the body this year. I mean, the, it's just really, a lot of products in, um, in Europe already focus on the body, and um, this year in the U.S. we're seeing um, a heck of a lot of, of new products. And also, we are, um, for the first time, re reporting on these devices in other regions of the world. And in the UK, there's, um, there's a lot of, of these products that are marketed through um, specialty store retailers like Boots, actually at the pharmacy. And um, you can see on the left hand, in Germany, Schick has a brand called Squoom, and that's a anti-aging device, and then in France, there, there's quite a few, and there's some from the Netherlands also. Philips has um, a couple of devices that are marketed in the UK and Germany. And here's some more, and then Asia is really a hotbed um, for these products. From a consumer standpoint, we know from professional skincare that China is a huge market for um, professional skincare. So we're thinking um, that it will follow suit for um, these devices too. And lastly, I mentioned that um, last year L'Oreal acquired Clarisonic and we're seeing other um, mergers and partnerships afloat as well. Um, in February, P&G announced that it was signing a partnership with Sidon, which is a UK-based technology company, to um, market laser hair removal devices. So, so to sum it up, um, this is a really interesting market. I totally enjoy um, learning more about it and talking to marketers. There's a lot of PR buzz that surrounds it. It's very fast growing, so a lot of people are interested in it and also interested in how and if there's opportunities to team up topical products with, the, um, with these kind of devices. And it really covers a broad spectrum of age groups and, and tackles a lot of different um, skincare concerns. We expect that in the next couple of years, the market will grow to be about $3 billion globally. So it's an important market that we, we're tracking from a cosmetic and toiletry standpoint. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. That was extremely insightful. Are there any questions? devices that are currently successful right now are actually marketed with a topical product that go with it? Do That's you have a, a really good question. Clarisonic, when you buy their starter product, there are three tubes of product that you'll get with it. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to use it, but they, they do come with the product. Olay's product, Pro-X, which there's a Pro-X line, comes with product and New Skin's product um, comes with it. Some of the other products, like there's toning devices, like New Face, it comes with a gel that you're supposed to put on yourself. I guess it helps the connectivity. But it, right now, I would say that um, in terms of the devices that we've looked at, it's really, there's not, it's not that common. Yeah, I have a Clarisonic, and I love it. Right. You know, I, I could marry it. If it was legalized marriage to Clarisonic, <laughs> I would marry my Clarisonic. But, um, <laughs> no, I like mine, too. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It tones and does all kinds of great things. Yeah. But, um, but you yeah, know, they don't really promote that cleanser or the other products very well. No, they really don't. And yeah. I think that, you know, going forward, that there's certainly an opportunity to have a marriage between a topical brand and, and a device. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. Any more questions before Karen leaves the stage? Okay, thank you so much, Karen.